Iqbal, shareholder activist. Theo Boata is in studio with me to explain some of the problems with regard to Steinoff's PEPCO deal. Now, maybe we need to refresh because uh, going back a few months, uh, Theo, many people were up in arms about the fact that there wasn't a cautionary release. You and I did mm. discuss that, as well as the director's dealings that took place from there. But no. uh, that's in the past now. What is uh, key to this transaction now, from what I understand, is a clarity on two particular issues. Let's start on the valuation of uh, the consideration between the, the two companies. Yeah. In terms of JSC rules and regulations, Breit um, issued a circular because of the transaction, because Breit was selling their PEPCOR shares um, to Steinhoff, and Steinhoff also issued a circular to their shareholders. Mm -hmm. And in both circulars, um, they had to get or call for an independent evaluation. And the independent evaluation was done by um, one or two of the top four auditing companies um, in South Africa. And what is interesting is that in the Braid circular, the independent valuation said the shares were worth 53 billion. And in the Steinhoff circular, it said the shares were worth 68 billion. So obviously, yes, your Braid um, circular and your Braid directors would have briefed um, the auditors to do the valuation based on their conditions. And the Steinhoff directors would have briefed. Um, their independent auditors to do the evaluation on, on whatever their conditions are in terms of. But it's so interesting to see that there's a, a, 30, a 15 billion difference between the two valuations of uh, PEPCOR shares. For the viewer, whose valuation is higher? Well, the Steinhoff valuation is higher um, at 68 billion. But what is interesting is that um, your, your Braid shareholders actually got a higher um, um, share payment than the valuation of the auditors. So actually they're in the money, so the break shares have done very well. You also had some interesting insights on the uh, clarity of the issue, the price of the deal as well, not only that, but the construction with regard to uh, the voting pools. Yeah, in terms of the, uh, which is quite interesting, uh, Steinhoff was, a, you know, uh, had no controlling shareholder prior to this transaction. And in the circular it actually mentioned that they they're putting together a voting pool um, agreement. And in that voting pool agreement, you've got voting pool parties. Now, what they don't disclose to the shareholders is the voting pool agreement. Mm. And they say, well, we haven't finalized it. They do disclose certain of the parties within the voting pool agreement. And the main parties will be Dr. Visa and Steinhoff directors, as well as Breit. So those are the three parties. But when you add up those three parties, the, the, the shareholding that they would hold will be 34%. And that's below the 35%. So I don't actually understand where they get to the 35%. So for, for me, what I would like to see is I'd like to see the voting pool agreement disclosed to the shareholders. I would like to see who are these parties in the voting pool agreement. And then I'd like to see the shareholding that they hold in the voting pool agreement. The parties within the voting pool, what difference does that make necessarily to a shareholder who might be observing this deal and thinking PEPCO at Steinhoff makes perfect sense? Why do they need to ask these questions? In other well, words? I think it's important because you want to know the, the, the parties in terms of the voting pool agreement have actually got a major say on Steinhoff. Prior to this, there was no major shareholder. This major shareholder could exercise things which could be for their benefit and not for the benefit of the minority shareholders. So surely when you put a transaction together, you need to be transparent right up front in the transaction as regards who all the parties are. Mm -hmm. But also going forward in terms of this transaction, if you look at Breit, Breit is also a party to the voting pool agreement, yet they said nothing in their circular to their shareholders that they are actually part and parcel to the voting pool agreement. Because the impact of the voting pool agreement is that Dr. Visa, who owns, who will own 19.5% of the equity of Steinhoff, and that's in the voting pool agreement. He and what they say in the circular is that the voting will be done by a majority. So Dr. Visa will always be the majority in the voting pool agreement. So here he has a 19.5% shareholding in Steinhoff, but yet he's entitled to vote 35% because he'll be able to vote anybody out in terms of the voting, in terms of who's in the voting pool. That's a lot of power for one person. Have we ever had a situation like this in South Africa before? Is it precedent setting? Well, I don't know if it's precedent setting. If you look at uh, Remgro, Remgro's also got AB shares. If you look at uh, ShopRite, they've also got uh, various different type of shares. If you look at Naspress, you've got different type of shares. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if it's precedent setting, but it's something which I think needs to be, um, uh, needs to be told to the shares as regards who are all these parties in the circular. So as a shareholder who might be sitting at home today watching this program, the three key considerations that one should take away from this red flag that you've raised? Well, I think the key considerations is that uh, you know, shareholders need to actually look at these circulars that are being issued 
and they need to actually read into it and see actually what are their rights. So if I was a braid shareholder, mm -hmm. I would definitely not be for uh, giving away my 5% 5.9% uh, in Steinhoff and put it into a voting pool arrangement. Well, we'll leave it on that note, Theo. Super. Thank you so much for your insights today. We'll definitely do a follow-up as to whether or not this deal goes through and uh, some of the key highlights that come out of it. Thank, Thank you, you so much to uh, shareholder activist Theo Wart.